Hey everyone, Tim Higgins here. So now we're going to move on from PII auditing to actually doing data masking. Now again, doing data masking and we're going to go ahead and create a new version here. Doing masking with the portal, it really uses the, if you watch the video with the fast data masker, it uses that engine to do it. So it's kind of cool. Um, it just does a lot of auto stuff for you. Let's go to our project. <clears throat> we're using our travel. I'm going to go ahead and create another version. We'll call this uh, data masking. We'll call it travel. Masking. Oops. Okay. So if you paid attention to the actual uh, PI auditing one, this one isn't too much different, other than the fact that you actually get to um, do the masking. So we're going to go into here, into here. We have nothing. So what we have to do is we have to create a model. So we'll just call it new environment dev. This is a dev environment. We're going to add a data source. Hopefully you've seen this plenty of times where you've seen me do this. Uh, travel E, so you understand what I'm doing. And here I should see my profiles. Travel E. If you watch the video about subsetting, I told you the secret to, to make sure your profiles come over. Um, the other thing too is data masking has this cool little option down here. We're not going to use it. But if you remember when we used uh, Data Masker and it was asking us do we want to use the, the database, we could create a profile for our seedless database, or by default, it uses the files, which is kind of cool. So we'll leave it as it is. Um, also, your classifiers, I'll talk about that in the PII. Uh, the classifiers are a zip file of JSON. I think this one's JSON, I'm not sure. But they're either JSON or XML or regex. So you can drop them in here. And this tells, um, this tells the portal, I, I want to call it TDM because I'm not sure what engine does it, but this tells the engine that's looking for PII what to actually look for. So now that we've kind of went over the admin pieces, we have an environment, we're going to go to our data model. We're just going to say get started. Now in the data model, it says which environment, which database, next. Now you could do all, but you, you know, it's fine. It won't take long. I was going to say I could exclude some of these, but what, right now we're just going to do all. So we'll say scan. Um, this takes a few minutes. So, well, it's, it's actually a good example of what it looks like when it goes through. So let's see, it's only got 54 tables. That shouldn't take long. Now with yours, I've had these last for a while. So it really could last for a while. Um, it just depends on how big your database is. And so here we're gonna go through. Um, the cool thing about this, if you ever watch the profiling video, I think I, I don't know if I ever did it, at least I thought about doing it, but how you profile through GT Data Maker, this kind of does it for you behind the scenes. So if I go look at people, if I know my alphabet, LMNOP right here. And if we look at this, it actually shows me the tables it's related to. Okay, it has no relationships, which that's not true, but we are in our dev environment. So I can go to edit relationships and I can connect to other places as I want. Okay, um, pretty cool. I'm gonna go back because I don't wanna do anything. I can also create aliases and I can click on details to get more details. Um, so especially if we had relationships. All right, so let's go back. The other thing you can do up here, there's this heat map. Um, I think the concept of this is it, it should draw out like if with the relationships, how they're dependent on each other. And I'm not sure why it's all snuggled up here on the left-hand side, but it is. And the other thing is the PII view. Now we haven't done anything yet, okay? So it doesn't know there is PII, but we're gonna go ahead and say, go scan our PII. We'll go ahead and select all of our packages. Um, you know what? I think I just want US. And just say go. Now this is the same thing as PII, as we talked in the other video, I can say only scan the top 10, or just scan 10 rows, um, or sample 10 rows, if you will. Or I can I can change that option up there. So we can scan string-based columns or numeric-based columns for both, and it's okay. Now here, I think I only want to say do only uh, people. Now, if you saw my other video, I didn't have the drop down. This one has the drop down. I have no idea what the difference is. Um, like sometimes you get the drop down, sometimes you don't. So I'm just gonna say I only do people. Um, I guess I can do one more, maybe credit card. Yeah, credit card. Most people today have credit cards and you can keep going, right? So you can build your own little world of, well, let's pick one that isn't PII, maybe airports and go. The only thing I'm doing here, you don't have to do that. You could have said scan everything, but that just trims down my scanning, right? That's all it really does. 
All right, now this is the same that you saw before with the PII auditing. The difference is we're doing it more in a, in a global public area, okay? Now here you also notice that we have our blue instead of green, but we do have one green. That means that these are tables that we didn't do any scanning for. See, no tags. Uh, but here, this one has address. Let's go ahead and look at it. And I think I'm okay with all that. So we're gonna go ahead and just do confirm, review next table. Um, that's not a phone number. Well, yeah, that's fine. I was thinking I can change it. Let's go ahead and see if we can add another one. Uh, tag type. I don't think credit card is considered a PII. So, um, I mean, I guess in a, in a sense it is because you don't want to steal it, but it doesn't identify a person. So if I find your card number, um, but anyway, you see the list of PII that's offered. Most of this is because of that's what's in that, the when we talked about using the classifiers. I'm just gonna leave this here just as an example, but I could say not PII. Um, I think you saw, if you watched the video on auditing PII, I did that there, so that's fine. And then there's no PII there, so we confirm and close. Now what this did is it gave us the check boxes, which means yes, we've looked at that, we're good. But when you look at one deeper, we can say investigate, right? And we can go deeper into that. But we can also rescan our data model, we can rescan our PII data, you can download it, and you can register these tables if you want. What we're going to do now, though, is jump down to data masking. And we're going to say go. Now, it sees the two that we did, okay? This one has eight. That one has um, one. Oh, yeah, the credit card thing. So then we can click on this to see what the information is. Okay, the masking functions, name, name, um, email. I guess I could have got rid of this one, just be consistent. All right. Uh, most of that's pretty common sense. Now, if you remember, if you watch the Fast Data Mask, everyone, in there I showed you the settings page. This is the same settings page here, okay? Um, and there's a lot of them. We're not going to do that. We're just going to say kicks and giggles and go. Now, before we go crazy, let's see if we can see this in action. Um, okay, so we got execute. It should be ordered by ID by default. Okay. And now what we're gonna say is uh, exclude tables marked not PII, which is cool. We can do all tables, we can do confirmed only, which I wanna do confirmed only. Those are the ones I confirmed. So I don't wanna deal with the other ones even though there's nothing gonna happen. Um, but it just saves me on you know, my scanning piece. So masking scope, the whole environment, or we can pick certain resources like uh, different profiles, things like that. So see, but it's the only one I have, so that's fine. Uh, mask data in preview mode. Common sense, I can, same as before, I can kind of mask it to see how it's gonna turn out. Show pre-mask samples. Um, I think we can do that, that's fine. And now let's go. We're good, so we're ready to mask. Let's mask. Wow, this is cool. Are you sure you wanna do this? Because once you do this, there's no going back, I am sure. Okay, so now our masking is performing, okay? This one failed because I canceled it. Don't flip out, it was trying to mask the whole thing. And we're done. So if I click on this pretty little drop down here, whoops, this will give me my details about my masking. Okay, we have an audit. What does the audit say? Okay, so these were masked. So we've got, I'm trying to get some real estate here so we can see it, our tables, our columns and the function that was used. So if you remember in the other one, the hash love, the hash keeps the relationship, uh, formatted encrypted, interesting, and then hash love. Now you can change these, uh, not now, you already ran it, but that earlier when I clicked on that one and it showed me the options out there, what I was gonna run, that's what those are. Okay, so then if we go and look, let's see what our database says. Our database actually says, all right, so we're gonna look at the database. We've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and save this off. Safe. We're gonna see. Okay. That should give us at least one data. Oh, did I misspell it or something? My first name. Let's. Did I run it already? Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, so the masking worked. All right. 
perfect. So that person was there before I masked, and now that I'm masked, they're no longer there. So I guess that's a good valid test. Um, so fair enough, that worked. Anyway, so that's masking. Notice how fast it was. And of course it says, hey, by the way, if you run this, there's no going back. So make sure you be careful when you do masking. Make sure you definitely do the correct table. Don't do it in production, common sense. And just be careful. But you see how easy it is in um, the portal as well. So again, I think Fast Data Maker Masker is still my favorite tool just because I've used it for so long. But here, you're just setting up your environment. You're setting up your model. You're running your PII scan in your model. Uh, again, it, it's different than doing it down here, even though the results are the same. Okay. Um, this is just for doing an audit. But up here, we actually did it in the model, our data model that we created. Um, and then from there, we basically just configured what we want to do. This is where you would configure you know, if I wanted something different here. Besides name, I could just go over here. Uh, well, I could say do not mask, but I can do the pencil thing. And here's where I can actually change my, just like in Fast Data Maker, Masker. Um, I'm getting click happy here, but you should be able to change this. And then that would change whatever your masking is. Okay. Um, and again, that's just hitting the pencil over here. If I want to remove one, that's fine. I can also add a where clause, uh, which is pretty cool. Like you could in Fast Data Maker. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, let's do. I think I got my screen locked up because I'm not be able to click on anything. But hopefully you all understand this. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me and I hope this was helpful. And oh, by the way, that should cover our ending of PII and data masking.